access, connectivity and devices group have uh, sorted out. Rajendra, you can bring your stuff. This is just only for point. Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, we make some sort of uh, methodology that we have uh, all the participants speak uh, about, about their backgrounds and about their working criteria and about their issues, what they are issue on uh, accessibility or uh, sustainability. So we take some few points, uh, some seven points uh, to make our project sustainable or to increase the access of um, um, community and to create it, uh, establish the con connectivity in rural areas. For this, the first thing is that we have to select the project in our uh, one benchmarking. We must have to make uh, some common benchmarking. Who should have to configure about the demand of available? What is the available demand there in the area? Then the second thing is that how we can create the capacity building. Capacity building means not only for the, like as I including capacity building of women, capacity building of disabled peoples for that trainings and everything like capacity building in the whole community. And the third thing is that to make the cheaper cost or cheaper project, we should have to focus on the open source applications. If we focus our things in the open source applications, in the innovative devices, in the innovative hardware devices, which can use low power cost and which will be cheap. If we use that way, then this will be, uh, the project will be more cheaper and that will be more sustainable. And the another sustainability, the another most important factor is the participation of the local community. So local community must be participate for the design of the project, deployment of project, development of project, and customer, when they are, they should be customer of the project. And this should, share the investment, they should share the profit also. Even they are creating content, they are creating content by community and they are sharing the content, they are making profit by community and they are sharing the profit. So they are investing on the project and they are making the share in the investment in the project. So in this way they can do and they can participate in the project. So if we go in that steps, then we can make a project very sustainable. To, and to increase that, there are a lot of problems in the rural area because there are connectivity problems, there are so, like as a energy problem, there are capa, um, uh, less skills problem, human resource problem. So these all things should be addressed from the government level, from the local government level, from the regional government level, from the central government level, as well as business house also. Because if business house are participated in the project, is the profit basis project, then business level um, people will be participate and the project will be converted automatically in the profitable project. Once the project is profitable, it will be automatically sustainable. So these are the things that we have uh, carried in the sustainable part. Thank you. So that was the recommendation of uh, access, connectivity and devices. We are going to take the notes that Rajendra hasn't read and we will read it later if to find more points so to add in the longer uh, uh, explanation. Uh, I would now, uh, now request uh, the group content and services who is being represented by uh, Rajan, Rajan Varada. Um, content and services. Uh, we have uh, seven simple recommendations uh, to the government and uh, I'll start with the first one. The first challenge we had when even thinking about content is accessing the content. So I think uh, especially in the regional language, I mean this is a big challenge in India. Uh, so I think uh, what the first recommendation that we have is uh, the content access uh, in regional languages uh, should be standardized across all devices and in this we mean the input devices such as keyboards and the keypads on the mobile phones. They have to be standardized because uh, if you look at uh, multiple languages in the same, I mean multiple uh, vendors in the same language, uh, each one has a, the same letter in different uh, parts of the, of the ASCII keyboard. So they should be standardized and the government should insist that all vendors who provide 
services uh, for languages should be on a standardized keyboard. Uh, and I think the, this development should also be uh, with the recommendations of the state governments because they are involved in their own languages. The second one is that we recommend that the government to citizen services uh, be made available on mobile phones independent of vendors. So I think uh, that because the mobile phone is the uh, phone which is used largely in India, and I think it makes sense to ask government to provide some minimum basic services available on mobile phones in the local language of the state. Yeah. Uh, you said that services on mobile phone, yeah. independent of vendor. So yeah. vendor of services or vendor of the mobile phone? Only I, that sense. I, I think uh, the mobile phone uh, is it should be the uh, the key there because. No, no. I appreciate that. Yeah. All that I'm saying is, you are saying independent of the operator who's offering that That's service or independent of the mobile phone. I think it should be both. What do okay. you think? I think it should be both. I mean, I'm open to uh, more uh, inputs in this, but I think we felt it should be both. I would uh, ask the uh, chair to kind of consider that it should be both. The uh, CSCs will provide minimum services across all states standardized uh, in a standardized format uh, of minimum, uh, minimum services. This is, we want some basic minimum services which are uh, available on by the CSCs being uh, put across the country. They should be the same across all CSCs across all states. Uh, they should look the same, they should feel the same. Uh, and this is, I think, one recommendation that we have because every state government, every different vendor who takes it in the state government has different formats. It can be quite confusing. So if a person is migrating from one state to another state and is willing to look at the CSC services, they should be this, exactly the same right across them. Uh, one uh, recommendation is that the government should really uh, put in more resources on machine-assisted translations uh, for regional languages. English to, to the local language and in between language to language, regional languages. I think a lot of work needs to be done here. Uh, quite a few agencies of the government are already working on this, but I, I think they need a lot of resources because we have been talking to some of them and they really need help in terms of having resources. So that is our recommendation. Of course, uh, one is promotion of local content. I think a lot of focus should be given on government for developing local content and this in, in, in a way will also help creativity in local languages. And uh, the sixth one is prioritize the use of open software wherever possible. I think government should go in that, that direction. And, and the seventh, the most important of all, that all the, all the above six points should be a default that it should consider people with disabilities uh, across all the above six points. So they should always be looked at as a default whenever government does any kind of service or development across the country. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Rajan. Uh, I would uh, now request uh, Mr. Subore uh, to represent uh, and tell us the recommendations given by the Commerce and Business Group under Low Cost uh, Sustainability Access. Thank you, Osama. Uh, I just mentioned very briefly about our group, and uh, then you'll probably uh, figure out why is our recommendation the way it is. Uh, I think it was a very representative group. We had uh, representatives from a, representative from a large uh, IT and uh, software services company, a few NGOs who are trying to encourage small manufacturers of very leery you know, piece goods to come on board on e-commerce platform. We had two uh, government officials and. Uh, we had industry body representatives, both uh, domestic and international, and a couple of people from UN agencies. So uh, I think I sp uh, speak on behalf of my entire group when I say that we brought in a lot of emotion, but I'm not too sure how much of rationality we brought into this. So here are my five, uh, five points. First one is that all of us agree that there is a need for a uniform policy framework for promoting e-commerce in the country. So all of us agree that there, the current policies do not promote e-commerce in the country and we need a policy framework to promote e-commerce. So this policy framework could cover multiplicity of things. Uh, I think foremost among them should be the multiple level of tax structures and sales tax, uh, other taxes that we have. 
that is one uh, issue that we need to address through a uniform e-commerce policy. Uh, the second was we discussed a lot about building user confidence, uh, providing uh, required security for e-commerce transactions for the consumers, providing low-cost access mechanism for consumers. So there was a uh, there was a whole lot of issue around building con consumer confidence, building consumer trust towards e-commerce. The third was a bit tricky one, and uh, here we talked about uh, a government mechanism to support uh, credible e-commerce efforts. So that came out very strongly from the group, and uh, we can uh, give out some detail about that if you want offline, but there was a strong demand for a government mechanism for supporting e-commerce, credible e-commerce ventures, especially from the rural areas. Uh, the fourth point was about low-cost e-commerce models and open e-commerce models, whereby even smaller uh, you know, uh, people manufacturing uh, very low-end products and services could actually plug and play onto the e-commerce channels. And the last point was, obviously, we used a jargon for it and termed it symmetric or uh, synchronous e-commerce. And we felt that currently the e-commerce models are heavily uh, loaded towards urban, larger companies selling towards Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 and rural areas. What we want is that in case of a synchronous kind of e-commerce, if that happens, then we'll have urban-rural, rural-urban, rural-rural, and urban-urban e-commerce. And that is where I think we'll create a very, uh, uh, what shall I say, virtuous cycle of e-commerce in our country. So these were our five points, and I hope I have represented the thoughts of my group correctly. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Uh, lastly, uh, I would uh, request Mr. Ashi Sanyal to let us know what was the discussion point and the recommendation of the policy and regulation group of under low cost sustainability access. Thank you, Osama. Uh, <clears throat> uh, our group uh, was, of course, heavily loaded by the government people <laughs> and some uh, watchdogs. Uh, policy watchdogs who never sat, we offered the chair, but they are all standing on our neck, breathing on our neck, uh, which they do. Anyway, uh, uh, we actually uh, tried to uh, see the um, uh, task from three key words. One is the low cost, another is access, and they're sustainable. So all the eight points I'm going to read out on behalf of my group is actually veering around uh, those three keywords. So uh, first thing we group uh, recognized that there is a uh, low growth of low cost sustainable access in the uh, rural area, I mean in the context of India. Though uh, Osama told us that we must give the policy uh, suggestions keeping in mind the Southeast Asia because situations are quite similar. So we recognize there is a USOF administration, uh, Universal Service Obligation Fund administration, which could be a good way of getting some uh, incentive corpus, incentivizing corpus fund. So the first uh, suggestion from the group was that, that there should be a policy to create a corpus fund like USOF in India, and appropriate policy to make it operational. This is the first suggestion. Second suggestion is actually an uh, expansion of that. Uh, incentivizing the service providers, incentivizing the service providers from that corpus fund to provide the same services which are available in urban area but at a lower cost. The logic of this, uh, uh, this suggestion was in the group because by providing some fund from that corpus, uh, there will be uh, low input cost uh, and uh, the cost of the capital, etc. So there is a possibility of having a proper business model so that same type of services which are given in the urban area can be given in the non-urban area at a lower cost. Third is very important, uh, in India also we are seeing already the fruit of that. Wherever possible, oh we cut it wherever possible, sorry. Shared infrastructure should be there because infrastructure cost is quite a cost. Many of us know that 
when we see an wireless connectivity, 60 to 65 percent cost is the cost of the tower and maintenance of that tower. So it's a very conscious decision that shared infrastructure should be there. I will take half a minute uh, by one of our group member given an example. He said that if I pay for 2 Mbps network, the rules should be such that if I am not using the 2 Mbps network at all in the afternoon when I am not there, rules should permit me to sublet it, which is not presently the case. Sublet it so that I can make a business model and that can be reflected in the original subscriber model also for the service provider. So this is what the group's thinking that there should be rule to make it even unutilized capacity. It's not revenue generation angle, it is only unutilized capacity. Third point was there that everybody recognized the fact most of the policy comes from the supply side. So third suggestion is that demand side policy should come which will facilitate long term sustainability. Naturally the discussions of content, services, other IPR things all came but because it is the uh, ambit of the other groups so we only stopped there saying demand side policy facilitating long term sustainability. Then fourth suggestion came up under the copyright law because expand fair use of content under the copyright law because that will make a lot of services possible at the uh, demand side which is presently not there. The next one is the right of ways policy. It is a conscious uh, conclusion in the group that right of ways policy has worked as a deterrent to proliferation of the telecom and other circuits in the rural India. So we wanted to suggest there should be a national ROW policy, right of ways policy, which will promote proliferation of IT infrastructure. Next is also a burning issue in the country I mean people are debating we have included here integrated or unified license for multiple services involving multiple technologies this also I have got a lot of bearing on the low cost access sustainability etc because it will first it will cut down the cost of the license cost because here now different type of technologies different type of license to be taken some money has to go. So all these are added to the uh, last fellow, that is the consumer. It is all passed on to the consumer in some way or other. So it's a very conscious decision that there should be integrated and unified license for all multiple. And last one is slightly philosophical, if I can say, they allow me to say that. Spectrum regulations should reflect its utility as public good. So presently, the current focus is of, on revenue generation. While revenue generation is not uh, that much decried, but it should be shifted, current focus of revenue generation should be shifted as a resource for providing public good. So these are the eight suggestions from our group. I think we, can, we could reflect the nothing is missed out. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are left with uh, about two to three minutes and I would request Mr. Chairman to wrap up the session and also reflect on about the recommendation that has come to you and what you have listened. Do you think that these are the recommendations uh, that worthwhile uh, to consider and are they, uh, are they reflective of the region and the country as, as far as the you know, accessibility issues are concerned? Thank you, Osama. And uh, first of all, I must say that I am uh, quite uh, amazed by the uh, sweep of the recommendations that have come. Because when I first saw the program and the time available for the discussions and the recommendations, I uh, had a lot of doubts as to how within such a short period 
uh, such a diverse group representing people from different areas with a wealth of experience individually and collectively could actually wrestle and grapple with all the issues and come up with a cogent set of recommendations. Uh, I doubted that it could be done and I feel delighted and happy to see that I was completely and totally wrong. Uh, I think the set of recommendations which have come uh, uh, are extremely useful and insightful. There are uh, several common threads that I see underlying these recommendations, one of them being that many of them do envisage, uh, starting with the first one on access which was made, many of them do envisage a much higher degree of collaboration uh, across a whole set of uh, uh, stakeholders who are involved and uh, a more participative kind of an approach to the various uh, elements. And I think that this is uh, absolutely, absolutely necessary. We have seen that uh, sometimes this makes uh, things move a little more slowly, but uh, at the end of the day the result is far better and uh, uh, the overall progress is much quicker. So the participative and collaborative aspect I think was, uh, was very well brought out and various specific dimensions in that, uh, in that context. Uh, some of the regulatory uh, aspects uh, were brought out and we are all aware that there are uh, regulatory hurdles and I think these were spelt out in a uh, little bit on the e-commerce and the uh, uh, business group as well as on the policy side. Uh, I think I really appreciated also the point that was made that uh, you know we need to make this relationship uh, a little more symmetric because uh, I think it is now a, a, a kind of accepted wisdom that if this whole revolution is to uh, not only gain uh, uh, depth and spread but is actually uh, going to be very sustainable, then you should also be able to inject uh, positive, uh, positively into the rural economy. So this balance in terms of, uh, you know, not just a set of urban uh, uh, content or service providers providing it to the rural areas, but vice versa and also between the rural and the rural. I think it's a very important uh, uh, suggestion and uh, uh, it, it's something that definitely needs to be uh, worked on. Uh, I think on the uh, policy side as well also what was, uh, what was uh, mentioned I think shows a fairly happy amalgam between the policy makers and those who are breathing down the necks of policy uh, makers. So clearly that was a mix which uh, I think uh, produced some good results. Having said all of that, I would also uh, like to say that when uh, all of the recommendations were uh, bang on and spot on and uh, very, very useful and insightful, some of the recommendations did strike me as requiring a little more uh, work perhaps which is understandable, uh, for them to be actually transformed and translated into an actionable uh, point. I, 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 the recommendations as they are are actionable, but in order for, the, uh, for them to be translated into specific steps, uh, perhaps uh, some more work may be needed in, in some of the areas, and I would, uh, would urge uh, uh, DEF if they could also perhaps uh, uh, you know, uh, take on that role. Uh, to some extent, this may have already been done and have formed a part of the deliberations and may very well be reflected in the final document which is brought out. But if it so turns out that there is some more uh, detailing which needs to be done, perhaps on some of these points at least we can pick up as a follow-up and uh, drill it down a little further so that this can be acted upon uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, finally, on uh, my own behalf, on behalf of the uh, Government of India and I'm sure on behalf of all the uh, various uh, uh, policy makers here as well, I would uh, uh, like to say that uh, these recommendations would certainly be looked at very, very uh, closely and would in fact be plugged into the, uh, into the whole uh, decision making and policy making process as well as in the various programs and schemes. And I hope that uh, in the uh, near future, we will actually be seeing the result of the application of the thoughts and ideas which have emanated in this room on the ground 
across uh, the length and breadth of the countries. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. We will be privileged to take it forward to the action, you know, finally actionable agenda and we will keep in touch with DIT to forward it and IGF Secretariat. Uh, to make it uh, conclusive, I would request, as I requested earlier, please fill in the feedback. If not, uh, please leave your card. We will be in touch with you. We will send this recommendation in a proper analytical manner to all of you. If you have a feedback, we will incorporate that again. Just to do that, we have to be in touch. So, you know, for all all those things please leave your card please leave your number uh, uh, you know uh, contacts and uh, for many of you whom we knew that they were coming to participate here we have a certificate waiting in the corner of the room and you are going out you can collect it for those who have not we will send the certificate to them for that also we need your contacts and uh, um, details please do that don't forget that and thank you very much for this enthusiastic participation thank you very much once again वहीं पर दे देना कोने में तो फिर फाइल कहाँ है Okay. Uh, lastly, may I request Mr. Ashish Samyal to hand over the certificate to the uh, chair of the session? Yes. And all of you can collect it from the corners. Thank you very much. Presenter, ladies and gentlemen.